following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Very good evening and you're joining us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a program where we talk about contemporary topics or issues based on the youth. Now today on the program we are going to talk about grooming, styling and bridles per se because I've noticed like a lot of youngsters out there we try to try a lot of new things on the way we look, uh, the way we appear and they say you know always the first impression is very important for a person so with that regard we're going to talk about the beauty industry here in Sri Lanka and also about the youngsters who want to become potential beauticians in the future also and to talk about this topic we have a very prominent guest and who is Hasini Gunasekara who is a very professional uh, beautician here in Sri Lanka and also she's running the franchise naturals also and she is also the daughter of Deepika Gunasekara I'm pretty sure most of us would be knowing her as well she was also a very prominent beautician so thank you Hasini for taking the time to join me on the show today it's all my pleasure. <laughs> all right. So, Hasini, tell me, when we talk about this industry, we talk about the term beauty. People come to you, they get to get, uh, come here to get their hairs done, they come here to get uh, their facials done and their makeup. So, in your term, how do people standardize beauty and what does beauty mean to you? Right. Well, actually, uh, I think it's a very vast topic. And uh, over time, I think it has evolved so much. Uh, when I was young, uh, when the industry was young, I think uh, the concept of beauty was far different from what it is today. And if we take uh, what today the industry is and what beauty is, I think it's so much decided uh, on a social platform. Maybe it's uh, your selfie that defines, or it's sometimes maybe it's the filters. So today beauty uh, cannot be actually uh, framed in any particular way because uh, we see trends, global trends which are international coming into uh, you know our local scenario and everybody wants to be a part of it. They all want to uh, kind of embrace that international uh, vibe and to make sure kind of they fit into the society. So yeah, so I think that's uh, beauty from in my perspective I think cannot be defined in one way but it is how you feel and what you connect with okay so tell me now you being in this industry for quite some time now I believe in 2002 only you came down to Sri Lanka and started this whole chain also and uh, through the time period how do you think that the industry has changed how the styles have changed and how have you been adapting to these changes um, so actually uh, what's most important in this industry is being updated, being able to cater uh, to the current trends, to be able to give what the customer requires. And when I say the customer, and the customer is also very diverse, you know, meaning uh, the customer can be uh, not only, uh, you know, a age group of, you know, 15 onwards, it could be anyone from 45, 50, or it could be any, you know, older customer as well. So your customer completely uh, requirement changes based on their age, based on um, you know uh, maybe their social status, maybe their social background or maybe even profession. So the customer requirement is very diverse and uh, to be able to cater to all that you need to be trendy and you need to know what trends were in. Uh, you know sometimes it might be gone it might not be in trend but still it's in fashion for that particular person mm -hmm. because their age is different you know so it's not just being what it is today but it's also knowing what was it yesterday 
and what is it tomorrow because when we now i think the biggest challenge is now we have a lot of youngsters coming to us and then understanding what they want you know and uh, being in trend with them is now i think most important because that's our future clientele and to be able to cater to them to be able to understand what are their trends and what are they following what are the global trends they're following you know now the k-pop the korean uh, you know uh, is in in such a big trend right so we need to know and understand what haircuts are trending right now you know what makeup looks are trending right now so it's very diverse and it, this industry is beautiful because of that because you're constantly changing constantly you know creating something of your own and also trying to be trending to the world trends so it's very interesting how do you think uh, the styles also have changed throughout the years for example give give an example of a style those days and what's the demand now at the moment so if i give you a very very simple you know example so today you know like if i take uh, a customer who's been one of our customers maybe 10 years ago uh, would want the same trend maybe even today but let's say in 10 years ago if I would have done a lip color would have been a lip liner a lip you know a filling color and it would have been very much like a matte shade but if I take a youngster today who's you know maybe just 13 14 or even 15 or even in that age group they would not want a liner they would have just want a smudge lip maybe just a tint and maybe a little bit of gloss you know and could be very nude like almost like no color at all so i mean trends are constantly changing so it's it's actually kind of uh, learning how to maneuver around that being very agile being able to adapt to any of that is very important L another question that people ask is I don't understand why this person is going to this particular side. I like it this way. You know, there are so many stigmas and opinions about how a person looks and about what they like. So, for example, if we talk about the styles of makeup, some people would go for a really natural look. They just want their features to pop out. Whereas another person would want that fantasy makeup with the dark eyeshadows, dark lip and uh, so on. So, what is your opinion about that? Well, um, so I would not be the best to say what's right because I think it's very personal. When it comes to grooming, when it comes to makeup, when it comes to being beautiful, it's a very personal thing. It's how you see yourself. So I constantly see whenever I, you know, cater to a customer, then I try to understand their perspective, you know, because how they see themselves like sometimes i see someone and say oh my god she's so gorgeous she's got the most prettiest nose or maybe the most prettiest eyes but whereas the customer don't see it that way you know she thinks no you know i don't like my eyes you know i don't think i have any beautiful feature so then you as a you know a beautician or a hairdresser you get kind of in a you know a, like stuck in between trying to you know come to terms with what she feels and how you feel so I, I think it's, um, you know, I know that there is so much that, you know, society defines beautiful. But at the end of the day, it's what you personally defines yourself as beautiful, which is more important. So finding confidence in who you are and finding confidence in, you know, your color, in your features, in your hair, in your body type is so important because today i think uh, it's all about that and you know being that you know having that confidence to say look i'm beautiful as i am and i want to maybe enhance what i have that's where we come to play and you know us bringing that beauty out otherwise um, i would not put them into a box or say that this is right or wrong and i don't think today even youngsters i'm talking about the new generation i don't think they're really worried about what others are thinking you know mm -hmm. they are very i think they are more confident and uh, because of social media i think they are more stuck in the you know defining beauty in you know in their own way because like global trends are in their palm now that's right you know when we were growing up when especially i was growing up i did not know what the global trend were whatever we saw on tv was you know the global that trend but yes 
today youngsters they have it in their palm and they'll go through it and they'll def- you know kind of identify themselves in those trends and say look this is the kind of trend i want to be in and it sometimes it's very regional also you know they are very specific to a certain ethnicity and they'll say look i want to fit into that ethnicity so it's very complex you know today beauty industry is super complex and what's amazing is the customer really knows what they want to a certain extent mm-hmm. the young generation they are i think pretty much you know kind of they come with this is what i want you know and uh, i think the older generation was a little bit more like you know i trust you you can do anything you want you know i i used to get customers like that who will say you know uh just go ahead you know do whatever you want and i know i trust you with it you know but now the younger generation is very much fixed and they say look this is exactly what i want and if you are not be able to uh, satisfy them or you're not able to give what they want they are very dissatisfied very fast so it's kind of you know a little different something that you mentioned but it, it's very difficult to find that balance between what the customer wants and what you think would suit them so when it comes to bridals also i've come across so many weddings also when you look at the bride like okay this is not the person i know she's completely different so that's because maybe either the stylist recommends that way or she prefers to be someone completely different so what's your view point on that on that person's special day a bride needs to be special you know but is it to an extent where she should look completely different than the ordinary what's your view on that so my view i i always think that a uh, uh, a bridal image or a picture should last forever right so so if you are not you know be able to relate to who you are in that picture i think it's going to be a bit difficult you know for you to really kind of say look that's me and sometimes you show your wedding picture and be like oh that's you i mean like you look so much different so i of course personally it's my personal opinion i feel like it's not a fashion you know extravaganza where you are trying to bring out the you know some major fashion uh, you know look it's not the met gala it's it's the bridal you know it's where you're kind of going to have your image or your pictures put up for the rest of your life and then you know you're meeting your family you're meeting your friends so i personally believe you know you have to be very comfortable in who you are and bring maybe the best of that but you know not completely go or be someone who you are not because it's your wedding and it's not all about you know making it making sure you are doing everything that you've always fantasized you know some some brides will say look i've always wanted to be dressed like a bride like this but it's not about that it's more i think about the people who is coming to the function it's more about that day and it's also more about you so i of course believe it's important to be more you than a fashion statement another thing is about uh, cosmetic alterations in yourself now a lot of people as you said they might not be satisfied uh, about how they look uh maybe they would want nose fillers or they might want their lips done or something of that sort so do you think that's advisable for someone to do well i think uh, these are uh, cosmetic procedures have been there around for a while and i think it's the fastest route to beauty or vanity and but i, I mean i can't say it's vanity because I think if someone has certain flaws that they really want to kind of you know hide or they are not very comfortable maybe because of certain accidents maybe for you know deformation so then I believe this becomes good options for someone to actually you know take care of themselves and kind of you know um adjust certain uh, things that they are not very happy about but um well So like I said it's been there for a while and uh, people have done it and we've seen and also we've seen adverse effects of it as well so i think today everyone has enough and more information to kind of you know um understand what it is whether it's good or is it what they should do so 
personally i think it's a help or it's a support system but uh, might not be the best to rely on completely and um, i personally believe aging naturally is great but i might change that while i age <laughs> <laughs> you know so when you see the issues at hand maybe you know you feel like okay you want to have your youth back you know or maybe you want certain features highlighted in you know then maybe i, I might think differently but right now i feel like um, making the best of who you are is important and um, i mean if it's something that you really really want and it's something that's really bothering you then yes i think it's best to get it out of your way uh, again cosmetic uh, you know procedures are being there for a while but the safety of it i think is entirely up to you to find out enough and more information about it and then go ahead and do it all right hasini we have to continue with our discussion and we'll in the next segment we'll be talking about the beauty industry per se as well but before that let's go into a short commercial break you're watching gen xyz and we'll be back soon back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with Hasini Gunasekara and uh, in the first segment we were talking about you know beauty grooming and about the industry and also we left off by talking about cosmetic alterations also and what beauty means to a person now when moving towards the grooming aspect of it um, when you think about beauty and makeup and hair people think about girls most of the time but i feel you know at this time and age like boys also get their hairs done or their eyebrows plucked or get their makeup done if they have a shoot or something so do you think grooming is necessary for just the females just the males it's something very necessary for everyone well i think it's something that is very necessary for everyone so even um, you know what i feel uh, today the requirement is that everybody is looking at a personal branding so people are actually wanting to differentiate themselves from everyone else so to differentiate yourself it's not actually your qualifications or your you know family background or your social status or your friends they don't really define you but it is that differentiation comes from your personal image so your personal image is a very crucial part Uh, in building a great career in building a great uh, i'd say you know just anyway even in your social uh, you know when you're mingling with others people being able to recognize you like as in a very particular way is very important so because of personal branding is such a key important area for any one person so i think today it's very unisex there is no real gender uh, you know where we say this is very specific for one but it's a very general uh, approach and i think today grooming has taken a massive massive part in a person's life for example when you talk about grooming what are the things that uh, people should keep in mind is it just the hair is it just the makeup is it the way you dress as a beautician and a hair stylist oh, what is your advice So it's um, you know what I feel when I advise anyone when they are actually building a certain image, I always say you must have one uh, key element of your personal image because that key element becomes your you know where people will recognize you for. So sometimes like if I take myself, it's my hair, and uh, so it may be for some the outfit, maybe it's a particular way that you dress, and you're very consistent on it. being consistent is very important where people can recognize you by far by just you know kind of seeing that and they'll say oh that's that person even if i did not see her face i know who it is so you see today we see such brands you know i mean in uh, our society we find so many that we can just identify by not even looking at who they are you face is not any more a recognition because you know there's so many things that we do now we've been wearing a mask for a very long time so we have been unable to actually see who they are and uh, because of that we've had to use other uh, you know like your hair your outfit 
maybe to differentiate yourself so it's some one key element that you really need to identify and say look i'm going to work on this very well but otherwise everything comes to play so you need to make sure your outfits in on point uh you're able to express who you are through your outfit and your makeup or your skin uh you know is well taken care because it talks about the attention you give yourself it talks about the detail you're going to it talks about how much of self love you have and those all talks about your personality and it also talks about how confident you are you know individually That's so right. it's it's a whole package so when you're talking about skin care routines and self care is there anything particular that would you you would like to advise our viewers who are watching this also or a particular routine that they need to follow for boys or girls because people think self care is expensive that i need to buy these products no i don't have the finances to do so so basically do you think it requires a lot of finances in order to take care of yourself no see actually um you we have a lot of resources at hand and uh, today everyone's looking for natural remedies looking for uh, best solutions not the most expensive though because we understand that it's not the price that defines you know how good it is for you so routines yes a routine is a must i think it's very important at a very young age to start creating a routine because hygiene is the beginning of being beautiful so hygiene is a routine like brushing your teeth washing your face washing your hair you know having a bath those are very very integral part of you know being beautiful apart from that you must have your own skin care routine so that you take good care of your skin so we have this very basic which is a very ancient routine we call it you know uh, we call it the cleanser toner moisturizer ctm process which is very important so cleansing means cleanliness you know cleaning your skin toning is important so that you can you know balance your ph so we can use a toner now today what's in, you know kind of in fashion is using ice so giving yourself a nice bath you know giving your face uh, you know a, a very refreshing touch of ice is now the best toner you can use so it's not just a product but you can find that i think very easily and then you have your moisturizing so maybe you don't really need to do moisturizing but you can do use serums oils and there's so many options and i'm sure today um, you're able to find very good uh, you know substitutes not necessarily something that has been marketed but something that really fits your budget and your requirement that's the thing now when people talk about brands and products they think okay this is expensive this might not suit my skin the products that suit my skin are expensive i can't afford it or it's not available here in sri lanka so as a beautician what advice can you give to to substitute these type of products like natural yeah products so okay there is so many substitutes naturally um i think you need to do a little bit of research then you will definitely find but some of my very favorites in you know natural remedies is like aloe vera aloe vera i think in sri lanka you can find it you know yeah enough and more so aloe vera is amazing i always you know i tell some of my customers when they come for their personal care i say look you make your own toner at home or you create your own ice bath at home and how you do it is you just add aloe vera uh and then you can add maybe honey you can add a little bit of mint leaves and uh, maybe a few drops of lemon and then you blend it out and put it into ice cubes and use that as you know it has like a everything in it so you can use things like that you know those are great ways to substitute but otherwise if you are wanting a product you want a very quick solution you want something easy to use then what's important is i personally don't uh, you know i don't really look at what influencers are telling because i like to have control over what decisions i'm making so i always suggest you know it's not just because somebody is promoting something you shouldn't buy it because that person's skin might be different you know their environment might be different so most of youngsters are watching international you know influencers and then you think oh you know this might fit me well but it sometimes doesn't so my advice is that read the ingredients very clearly 
and then understand those ingredients are important for me or not is it something not because somebody is using but is it required for my skin and what does it do do your research first and then look for that ingredient in your product sometimes the product might have very little bit of your ingredient so you might want to increase the concentration look at serums look at oils you know things that can really be beneficial and always always if it is as much natural as possible is the best all right so just talking about beauty is not enough but like the people who want to get into this industry who has the passion just like you to become a stylist to become a beautician um what pathway do you think sri lanka provides in order to for them to follow their passion in this industry i know that you're running an academy itself so tell me your experience in that and about the opportunities available here for the youth yes so um actually hair and beauty industry globally is a billion dollar industry it's if you look at the top most uh, you know businesses that are very successful as some of it is salon industry because grooming is something that will never die constantly people will want to look good so they are constantly coming to salons we say you know our business grows as long as your hair grows you know so it's such a uh, beautiful industry to be in you're with customers all the time you're making someone beautiful it's very rewarding it's really very pre- pleasurable uh, well if you're getting into the industry there are qualifications locally identified as nvqs the national vocational qualification so this is a pathway which is not the traditional education path but this is the vocational education path so if you want you can be nvq qualified in sri lanka it's very important to be nvq qualified you have your qualification up to level 4 to start working in the industry and after your qualification it's very important for you to start and have some experience work in a salon understand how the business operates most of uh, you know most uh, people who come into the industry think it's the quick way to make money i just have to do a small course and then start my salon i i have seen plenty of those people and they don't last long the salons get closed you know it just becomes a, a burden you know financial burden so i always suggest do your qualifications get qualified get experience at least for a good 5 to 6 years of experience and then there's plenty of salons to do that in sri lanka we have some really good salons where people can work for and later maybe later uh, you know in your career you might want to be an entrepreneur that's an entirely a different ball game it's not becoming a hairdresser hairdresser is a very passion driven career and you're making someone beautiful using their hair and their skin but when you start a business when you become a business owner maybe you have very less time to do hair and beauty right you have more time you have to spend more time managing a business it's an entirely a different ball game so if you are going to look at becoming an entrepreneur starting your own business then you need to have a different set of skills as well all right hasani we have to go into another short commercial break as well in the second segment we'll be meeting one of your students as well so before that let's take a short commercial break we'll be back soon you are watching genix wise Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and this is the last segment of this episode. And we were in discussion with Hasini Gunasekara, and also we have been joined by one of her students as well, uh, Anusha Dias, who is also a qualified beautician, and also now she's moving into the corporate aspect in this industry as well. And in this final segment, I want to focus with you all about doing business in this field because a lot of people have. found a lot of youngsters who want to get into this field who want to make other people look beautiful and showcase their creativity on themselves so hasini uh, to start with you our last segment you you gave a little bit um, a little idea about how to do business here but in your case you're running a franchise but there are also individuals who are running their own brand so in your perspective which pathway do you think is the best Well um I'll say again it's a very personal decision you take to uh, you know build a brand so whether you're going to build your own brand or whether you're going to join hands with a uh, well known brand is is some a decision that you have to personally make well when it comes to business uh, what matters is whether how well you can perform it 
how much standardization can you bring and what technology does it back get backed by these are very important questions you have to make when you are starting a business so if it is a, a personal brand then maybe you need to acquire these uh, you know the technology the the ideas the you know the marketing concepts the the financial backing then you know the uh, digital uh, presence there's so many aspects to a business and then what's important is when you are personally running it i think you need to make that on your own but if you are part of a brand then brand also brings in some value you know they already has the expertise and then you follow it so it's i think a very personal decision to make and for me i felt uh, because i've also am a business student and uh, completing my business education i understood that i like to give a more standardized approach to my customers i want my customers to have accessible beauty care <coughs> affordable beauty care and in a ambiance which is nice you know you feel pampered and it's uh, approachable so that's what i wanted to create and i for me this was required but others might think differently usually now when you get um, partnered with a franchise you have to stick to their standards their structure and so on so haven't you felt restricted in order to showcase your creativity in a certain manner so um actually uh I'll say um I haven't actually felt that way because this is even though it's a brand it's a franchise we've uh, had certain uh, you know areas where we had to stick to certain uh, procedures but there's also customization to that locality because beauty industry is very uh, you know place specific like for example even my outlets I have eight outlets and each outlet is very different from each other like if i take you no know, gay goda then that customer clientele is different so like that there are many differences so there's a lot of localization so there's a lot that i can bring in mm-hmm. as the local expertise and uh, there's so much of um, modernization <laughs> that i've done in my own uh, all right way. now when talking about a young person becoming a beautician the perspective of the old generation can be different because they have the stereotypical views of you know no my child has to become a doctor an engineer or a pilot or whatever so when we talk about the occupation of a beautician it's not very prominent or very famous among sri lankan parents but there are st- still children out there or young people who want to get into this industry so a person like that is also only joining with us on the show so anusha anusha you have been in this industry you've started from scratch you've learned from hasini and you are working also now and you're a qualified beautician would you explain a little bit about your journey what you went through and advice that you can give to the youngsters yeah uh, thank you So my name is Anusha. So I joined with the academy after my A levels in 2012. Then I completed my salon management diploma within one year. Then I got opportunity to work with Miss Hasini in Deepika Gunasekara Salons, Kiri Badgoda. So I worked there three years. Then I uh, uh, moved to Nugegoda Salons. Then I got a manager position. And I worked uh, almost three years, I think, uh, in Nugegoda Salon. then i got uh, another uh, good opportunity to handle uh, academy as a admin manager and uh, marketing so i have take care of a uh, marketing and admin side in uh, academy so then we have expanded the iab academy for dubai so we have now we have a branch in dubai so almost uh, now i worked with her 10 years uh, so now i am looking a uh, dubai branch That's great. So now you are a qualified beautician yes. and also handling another Business. outlet also yeah. and which is an international, international outlet also. So that's that's good to hear because a lot of people don't find these sort of avenues. They say, okay, once you become a beautician, <coughs> that's it. You're a hairstylist, you're a makeup artist. That's it. What do we go from there? So Hasini, advise our youngsters uh, and also the parents or the older generation who are watching this about the opportunities available for the people who want to get into this field. To start with, I think this is like I said at the beginning of the interview that this is an amazing industry to be in. 
you're constantly making others beautiful at, at the same time it's not just something that you need to really you know always be uh, you know limiting yourself to becoming a hairdresser or a beautician you can progress in the industry by taking more managerial positions you know you can uh, take up a branch manager then of course you can uh, in that line you can also go into training you can go into you know marketing there's so many avenues in this industry where as a professional you can explore and then of course uh, later I think one uh, one one advantage that I see is that this this can be a very good business opportunity as well so you can progress up to becoming an entrepreneur but most important there's such a lot of avenues you don't really need to uh, become a hairdresser but you can also explore the other areas to uh, you know find your passion where it fits and then this is a beautiful industry per se to be in because uh, beauty industry is constantly growing that's yeah. right and for another uh, instance how are you tackling competition now when we take bridles for example i've had a lot of people thinking okay i need to be dressed from this person per se some person might say no this person is good but you you're running a franchise haven't you ever had the the idea of starting your own brand so that people would look for yes hasani guna sekra to dress me so in my my personal uh, you know challenges is that time for me time is very precious i write currently right now i run naturals uh, i also have the academy which anusha helps me out uh, she is heading my dubai branch so uh, we have our branch in dubai and in sri lanka so it's a, a lot of my time gets uh, actually divided among these my three businesses so for me time is very uh, difficult to find so i always try to make my business not uh, you know me centric not looking for hasini but rather looking for the people working for the organization so i am very happy to say i've got a lot of talented people in my businesses and they themselves bring something beautiful to the table they are able to uh, take care of the customers in a very uh, i'll say with a very uh, flair of their own so my customers are looking for them which makes it easier on me so i'm not constantly you know um, working or constantly trying to cater to my customers so that i don't have to disappoint them i have a massive team that takes care of that and uh, my time goes mostly for my management which i love doing also just like hairdressing is my passion i think i'm really good in my business also so i like ex- uh, you know uh, expanding my skills in that as well Okay, uh, Anusha, Hasini, I think both of you all can give your intakes on this. Now, since both of you all are in the industry and um, Hasini, you know about Anusha's <laughs> journey also, you can add on to her as well. What are some of the main challenges that you face throughout? So, for example, if a person wants to join this industry, they can be aware of or something that they can be uh, careful of. I think most important is getting qualified. Yeah, right? getting qualified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. qualification is important but yes and so also maybe right place yes right place <laughs> it's more important there so are many places yeah for this industry but if you can choose right place then you can achieve more right and yeah, place the, as in to get your qualification qualifications and uh, knowledge both in like the only certificate yeah, yeah. experience mm-hmm. i think experience, gather yeah. your experience from the right place like I think if someone wants a certain uh, like a, let's say a market if they want to tap to that market then they should pick that right business that cater to that market get the experience there work in that and understand how that business operates I think that's also very important like your exposure where have you worked mm-hmm. you know what experience have you gathered I think that's very important I think when you're running a Yeah. when you especially guiding your career to the you know kind of your dream goal then i think it's important that you get these things right hasini when you entered into the business now it was in 2002 uh do you think the challenges you faced back then still exists now and what was the main challenge that you faced yeah so i for me i of course i took after my mother so 
I was born into the salon business, so I've mm-hmm. basically grown up in a salon. Um, my challenges were at that time, I think, was that you know me being young blood, and the industry was a little older than me, so. I, me being able to introduce what I was passionate about, you know, the education that I had, how I can, um, you know, share that and bring that to the industry was my biggest challenge because I was different. I offered something different. And the industry also did not, you know, I think they didn't recognize me. Obviously, sometimes the industry is also not willing to change. But I think as at that time, me being the second generation, you know, of my mom's being, you know, a part of that, the first generation of the industry. I think I've brought in a lot of uh, a different view to the industry and um, getting that executed initially was difficult and people accepting, you know, the changes, the styles, the different ways of doing things and how the industry should be and the norms being changed. Those were challenges, but later, you know, I mean, I think when a good thing happened or when people see the benefit of it, then they accept it. How are you tackling uh, competition so far? How are you taking it personally and business-wise? Because right now in the industry, people are so demanding and, you know, people are constantly trying to make themselves look good and try new things and they are eyeing for the best. They want to go to the best, so they're very picky when it comes to looks. So how are you tackling that segment? Well, um, for me, I've always been very competitive with myself. I've always wanted to be the best that I can be and I've always focused on where I was going. So when when you constantly do that, you try to kind of, you know, up your game all the time. So you're kind of in the race and moving forward. Uh, I do look around sometimes, but that's really not my focus. So I, I don't really compare myself with or my brand with anyone else because I always feel we are very unique. And I don't find myself competing with anyone because I'm not competing with anyone but myself. So I want to be the best. I want to give my customers the very best I can give and achieve something that I can be proud of. So it's not about what the industry is doing. I mean, I follow the technology advances or the trends. (coughs) Definitely I follow with others. But uh, business-wise, I don't see everyone as my competition. I see myself as a competition. If I'm happy with myself, then, you know, I kind of take care of my competition. That's great. And uh, we've reached the end of our program as well. And I want to thank both of you all for sharing your intakes as well. I think the viewers who are watching this also got a very good idea for the people who are trying to make themselves look beautiful and also the people who want to get into this industry as well. And Anusha, wish you all the very best also in the future thank and uh, thank you again Hasni for taking the thank time. you for having us all right that was our episode on gen xyz we'll be back again next week with another topic or issue based on the youth and just in case you couldn't watch us on air you can always re-watch by catching us on our youtube channel youtube.com slash other there in english i'm suzanne shanali stay safe and have a good night